Hi there everyone, welcome back to the Royal Society. Keith's got another great object for us here. We're gonna talk about it shortly, but before we do, we're gonna talk about the man who owned it, who was someone called Luke Howard. Who was Luke Howard? Luke Howard was a manufacturing chemist who became a fellow of the Royal Society, but despite the fact that he wrote many papers, he didn't write any about chemistry. Although he was a chemist, it seems like chemistry wasn't his strongest suit. What he seems to be most famous for are clouds. That's right. So he made his living from chemistry, but he's really interested in meteorology. Okay. The father of meteorology, I've heard him called. Well, the father of cloud studies, particularly, because that's really where he was going. Okay. And uh, he's most famous for classifying the clouds. Your three major terms, the cumulus clouds, your stratus clouds, and your cirrus, are then combined for various subdivisions. And the classification terminology you can see right there. Oh, we've got it here, have we? Yeah. Oh, here we go. So this is his Climate of London, two volumes worth. You know how the English like to talk about the weather. He got two volumes about the Climate of London. I have some choice words about the Climate yep, of London. Me too. Yep, we I, all do. I got caught in the rain just this morning, <laughs> so anyway. So let's have a look. Terminology of clouds. Have we got some of these names here? Yes, we have. Yes, so oh, here, we here we are. Here's Cirrus. Cirrus. A cloud resembling a lock of hair or a feather. Yeah. Okay. Seems fair. What else have we got? If you turn over. Cumulus, a cloud which increases from above in dense convex or conical heaps. Banked up clouds. Yeah. And stratus, an extended continuous level sheet of cloud increasing from beneath. Yep, so a level like a strata. All right, and then we have all these combinations you were talking about. Oh, and then there's Nimbus as well. Yep. A dense cloud spreading out into a crown of cirrus and passing beneath into a shower. This is a man who liked his clouds. Mm -hmm. But the object we've got today yep. goes back more to his profession than his passion. We're back talking chemicals. That's right. Now, this is a fairly standard apothecary scale. So you would use this to, to weigh powders or, or other things, small amounts of chemicals in a shop. And it's a fairly common object for the period, but it's a rather nice example. Okay, so we've got, obviously the chemicals go there in this tray. Mm -hmm. What's this kind of hook here, this claw? Well, you would put your weights on that side. Right. So if I just open this a moment, we can put a, a watch glass on that side, and you've got a little variety of weights there that you can use. They look like little gold coins. Little counters, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Some of them have manufacturer's names on them. So this is a standard that was used by Rogers and Company. And of course, as we know, weights and measures at this period weren't standardised at all, really. So basically what would happen is you'd have your chemicals on this side, and what do I put my weight on here? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Put the weights on here, like so. You can if you push can that lever down, you can see that it, it allows the scales to work. So these still work, Keith? They do, yeah. It's a very simple object. But there's something else in the drawer too. It's a letter or something like that. Yeah. It says, Sir Alan Hodgkin, OM. I'll take the gloves off. Yes, do. Because um, the paper's quite delicate and I, I lose so much dexterity with the gloves. Oh, we've got some s bit of smudging there. Bit of ink action. So it's on a letterhead, the Royal Society. It says, chemical balance belonging to my great-great-grandfather, Luke Howard. The balance was given to me by my second cousin, Lady Younger? Yeah. Rachel Younger. I now give it to the Royal Society at the end of my period as PRS. Oh, so he was a president. Alan Hodgkin, 1975. So he was a president at the end of his tenure as president. He donated this. From one of his ancestors, and we know science quite often runs in families, and this is a particularly nice example. Oh, that's wonderful. So not only is this a really interesting object, it's got real pedigree, and it's gone down through some famous hands over the years. Oh, look, straight away we know we're in for something different now. It's not um, spectacularly brilliant hand colouring. They're not really staying inside the lines, are no. they? Particular colour looks like he may have done it after a visit to the, the local tavern. And I, think, I think he had a few margaritas. <laughs> Indeed, yes. Oh yeah, I'm liking that. So that's the areas of grammar that the author is going to look at, flicking through that all in Latin text, obviously. We have logic. So these are like little title pages. Yeah, title pages to the different sections, illustrations of the uh, different concepts being discussed within these chapters.